Gentlemen, thank you so much for making time with me to, to talk, um, especially because, of course, we're here in Toronto, Elgin Theatre. There's a reason why we're here, because there are a lot of people getting busy, I'm going to use that term, with uh, something that's really special that's coming to Toronto, and uh, it's got to do with great music and a great show. Can you explain exactly what's going on here today? Well, we're, it's the first day of, re of rehearsals or auditions, actually, for a musical called Jukebox Hero, where the music is by Mick Jones, who's with us in the room, uh, and it's the music of Foreigner, but the, we, Ian and I have written the book of the musical, and uh, so uh, we're, we're hearing it for the first time today in different people's voices. What's it like to hear the talent coming in and performing these iconic songs? Well, it's extraordinary because many of them are very young. Uh, before the foreigner era, the, the peak of the foreign era, but they all seem to know. So obviously, they go back and learn it before the audition. But they all seem to genuinely know foreigner songs. Many people forget for a moment, and when you when you say remind them of the music that foreigner have written, everyone goes, "Oh God, yeah," because uh, there's so many hits enormous amount of fits. So it's been, f the talent here in this town is enormous. In well, fact, I'm glad to hear that because... No, we, they, they haven't been seeing people for many days and, and the people that already they've picked out for us to hear uh, are all exceptional. I think that's incredible. We do try our best, and especially if we're going to represent the music uh, of Foreigner, which has become so iconic. You gentlemen worked together for, for many years. What is it we like? We've worked together since before Foreigner were founded. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people can say that. Although I did know, I did know Mick um, f since, the, since that time. I've known Mick since the 70s. So how did this all come about? Who approached who about uh, creating this show? We've been trying to remember that. I mean, it, it, I, I used to live two doors away from Mick's manager, and Ian's known Mick a long time. So, you know, somehow or other it all came together. But I can't remember exactly who... who well, I, do you remember? Yeah, that? well, I think it was because suddenly the last few years there's been a lot of interest in exploiting artist catalogues, which have led to theatre, which in the old days there was rock and roll and there was theatre. And now the two are getting more linked together and because we'd written movies mostly mus uh, with a music based story um, we seemed an obvious choice as we all knew each other and the idea came up but we said we don't want to write a biopic we don't want to write the foreigner story we want to create and like some jukebox musicals a real story with real characters and then make the songs work tell the story. I'm going to jump in because that's why I want to ask how difficult is it to do something like that to create a story with iconic songs that when we grow up listening to these songs we have our own story to these songs. Well that's the most difficult thing you can do because sometimes you want the story to go from here to B and you don't have a song that says that. We did it before didn't well, we? Uh, oh yeah we've done, well sorry I don't want to interrupt you but did, we did a film called Across the Universe, which used, which used the Beatles catalogue. Obviously, that catalogue was tremendous. But again, like this show, we, we couldn't choose our favourite songs. We had to choose songs that furthered the narrative. Not that we have left any hits out of this. <laughs> it sounds like because you guys have worked together for so many years, it really is... Do you guys play off of each other when you help create these stories? How does it work between the two of you? It's, it's, it's a bouncing-off process all the time. I mean, when it comes to dialogue, inevitably, yes, there is a certain amount of improv there, you know, where, uh, you, you know, you throw a line out and sometimes you come up with, with, a, with something which takes you off on a different tangent. But, you know, really the spade work is always the plot. Plots drive you crazy. That's... Uh, what, what, I think Sp Spike Milligan wanted on his tombstone, I think, uh, at last a plot. <laughs> that, that was, I understand that completely, you know. They, they're the ones that drive you crazy. But you have to discover the characters as well. You have to really sort of talk about who they are and what they are. The, the, those, those are the things you do on day one when you're first digging the, digging the, uh, the earth. Can you give us a hint? Of what the story is going to be about, can we can we talk about that now? Yes, I mean, there are, uh, well, it's about a town uh, that uh, 
you know, like a one industry town where the, the, the plant closes so that the whole town is, is suffering. And uh, but the, the, there is a local hero, a jukebox hero, who, the kid who got away, who's a star, and they think if they can get him back to do a concert, all will be, uh, it will save the town. But there are a few problems because he had a big falling out with his brother over a girl. They used to have a band together. And so we have to resolve those things as well. That's, that's a hint. But because you have so many iconic songs, and you kind of mentioned it before, I'm going to ask again, though, how do you choose the ones that need to be in the story? Well, that's the most difficult thing, because some songs just don't work. Uh, or you have to be terribly clever um, of fitting them in. But the way we did it was Mick allowed us to make some lyric changes. For example, there's the song uh, Blue Day, Blue Monday. Blue Monday, which obviously is about a guy waking up having had a dreadful night with some girl who's obviously left him. Now it's about a plant closing and a whole town to singing Blue Monday because their lives are, are destroyed. So there's a little flexibility there. I cannot wait for this. I mean, do you guys, what is it like for you when you, you know, the project comes to you, you put this together, and then when you get to sit back and you get to watch it with the actors, with the music and everything else, what does it feel like well, when you see the end product? Thing. It's the best part of it. It's when we, we, we write mostly movies and television, and you write so much, and so much for various reasons doesn't get made. And the moments when you first are in a hall like this, with a cast, whether it's a film, whether it's drama, comedy, or musical, music's even more fun because there's music, it's just, um, it, it just gives you a sense of renewal. It, you suddenly think, this is why we do it. This is why we do it. We're with real actors, real singers, making the whole thing come to life. And, you know what? and for somebody like myself who's in the audience, the thing I enjoy most, this is the kind of theater you don't have to just sit there. You can get up and you can rock with the music too. I cannot wait for this. Gentlemen, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Cannot wait to see the show when it comes here in Toronto. Thank you so much. We can't wait either. No, and we thank can't. you, Toronto, for all, for all the talent. Thank you again.